we're going to look at a process called partial fraction decomposition and it turns out to be very useful in calculus um, and helpful in a process called integration and into anti-differentiation but it's also useful just to help analyze the graphs of rational functions so this is what it states if f of x equals p of x over q of x where those are both polynomials and the degree of p of x is less than the degree of q of x in other words the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator and if your denominator can be written as a product of distinct linear, linear factors, meaning it can be factored, then our function can be written as the sum of rational functions with distinct linear denominators. So that's kind of a mouthful, but after this example I think you'll see what, what it's getting at. So let's take our rational function 5x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Notice that the numerator has a smaller degree than the denominator and that the denominator can factor into x minus 3 times x plus 1. So what the theorem states is you can rewrite this now as some constant divided by x minus 3 plus some other constant possibly different, possibly the same as a, but probably different, uh, over x plus 1. So that's really, that's it for the, the most basic aspect of this. You can think of it as almost the, the inverse process of adding two fractions together to get a common denominator. It's, it's sort of the, uh, the inverse of that operation. So the next goal will be to find what a and b are, but in the first few examples I think I'm just going to show you the different, the different scenarios you could be in. And then in a later video, we'll do some examples where we actually solve for A and B. So here, um, here's our first basic example. You'd want to factor the denominator. And then uh, the, theorist, the theorem says we can rewrite this rational function as the sum of two rational functions, or expressions rather, with distinct linear denominators. So I highlighted the fact that you need, in order to use this, you need the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And if that doesn't happen, unfortunately, you're going to need to divide. So let's go over here and divide. A little bit of long division. Oops. A little bit of long division is going to be required. So we're dividing x squared minus 1 into 3x to the fourth. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to add in 0, you know, plus 0x cubed, plus 0x squared, plus 0x. All of these is placeholders. Plus 1. All right. So when we do the division, we think about what we'd have to multiply x squared by to get a 3x to the fourth and a 3x squared do it. We multiply back. 3x squared minus x squared gives you 3x to the fourth. 3x squared times negative 1 is a negative 3x squared. And then according to the division algorithm we subtract now. So when you subtract the leading terms go away and then I have 0x squared minus a negative 3x squared which gives me a positive 3x squared. Okay and then I do it again. So what I do is bring down this 1 and think about what I'd have to multiply x squared by to get a 3x squared, but that's just a 3. 3x, uh, 3 times x squared is 3x squared, 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3, and when you subtract, you end up getting 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0, x squared, 1 minus a negative 3 is a 4. So, how do we want to read this? Well, you read it the same way you'd read um, this problem. If I did 3 divided by 5, right, it goes in once. So, 3 divided by, uh, sorry, um, I meant to say 5 divided by 3. 5 divided by 3 would require this uh, little procedure. And what what we know is that that means 
that it goes in one full time with a remainder of two. So we could say one and two thirds or one plus two thirds. So in the same way we can write this as if you just sort of follow that model. This division would reduce to 3x squared plus 3 plus 4 over x squared minus 1. Kind of like turning it into a mixed number. Okay, and so then, let's see if I can get rid of this. I guess not. Uh, so then, this is um, not a rational expression, but the 4 over x squared minus 1 is. So according to the partial fraction decomposition, we can rewrite this. Let me just block this off a little bit. We can rewrite this as um, this piece as 4 over x plus 1 times 4 over x minus 1. And that means it can be written as some number over x plus 1 plus some other number over x minus 1. All right, so the point of that is that if the degree of the numerator is not strictly smaller than the degree of the denominator, you need to do a division first. Sometimes you have linear factors that repeat, and that causes a sort of a kink in this process. Um, again, there's the theorem behind this, you know, what I'm showing you is um, basically rooted in number theory, but we don't really have time to explain why that, or explore why that works, why it works. So, but in any case, um, if you had something like 5x minus 1 divided by x cubed over x plus 3, you'll notice that that linear factor x is repeated. It had, there's three copies of it. What that means is you can you have to decompose it in this fashion. a over x, and then you have to add in another term for every power of that linear factor up until its highest power. So that x cubed actually has to be divided into three uh, different partial fractions. And then, of course, we have another uh, linear factor, the x plus 3. All right, so if you have repeated linear factors, you need to... So again, like x is a repeated linear factor. If that's the case, you have to rewrite... You have to add in uh, three terms, in this case, one for each power, up until that highest power. So it's another example, the one below can be written, or would have to be written as, so I'm going to probably need a lot of space here, because it looks like we've got a lot of repetition. So this can be decomposed into a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 1 squared. So that's it for the x plus 1 term plus c over x minus 5, and then d over x minus 5 squared, plus e over x minus 5 cubed. So that's it for the x minus 5 terms, and then f over x minus 2. All right. And lastly for h, h can be written as um, a over x plus 7 plus b over x plus 7 squared plus c over x plus 7 cubed. All right, so if there's repeated linear factors, don't forget to uh, add in all the necessary terms. Uh, and lastly, uh, there, it is possible that you can't factor a polynomial into a uh, linear factor or, or to a product of linear factors, but it will always be possible to factor them into linear factors or quadratics. So if a quadratic can't factor, it's called an irreducible quadratic. And um, here's what the decomposition would look like in that case. So first, I'm just going to factor this denominator here using grouping. So if you group it looks like we can take out an x squared, and you get an x minus 1 left behind, plus an x minus 1. Think of there as being a 1 there. You can view this as x plus 1, or x squared plus 1 times x minus 1. 
so that this can be expressed as x squared plus 4x plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1 times x minus 1. So we know about the we know what to do with the linear term, right? That would just be a over x minus 1. Now the quadratic term here, x squared plus 1, cannot factor anymore, so it's an irreducible quadratic. The term above that has to look like a linear term. I don't know why you use c and d instead of b and c, but I guess it doesn't matter. So you have to account for the possibility that um, the term above the quadratic could be linear. And in some sense, you could think of the term above the x minus 1 term here as being a degree 0 or a constant. Right? There's, there's, that's really the only type of polynomial ha that has degree less than um, a linear term. So, but in any case, just focus. If, it, if there's an irreducible quadratic, you need to put uh, the, a linear expression in the numerator. So, for this example here, this can be expressed as a over x plus, now I've got a repeated quadratic, so I would say, as we do with the linears, bx plus c over x squared plus 1, and then you're going to have to write dx plus e divided by the next and highest power of the quadratic. All right, so this video has basically took care of all the setups that are net, that you could come across, or that you'll come across. Uh, in the next video, we're going to actually solve for these uh, these co uh, coefficients up here.